Hey guys, it's Aria. This video was actually requested by one of you, um, basically how to tackle the last 10 problems on the ACT math section, which I know are the trickiest, and the types of equations and types of problems that they generally throw at you on the ACT math section. So in this video, I'm going to go over five types of problems that generally show up on the ACT math section and are usually in the last 10 to 15 questions or the harder part of the test. If you haven't seen my first video on how to get a 35 on the ACT math section, I highly encourage that you watch that one before this just because I give more general tips and specific ones on how to tackle the ACT math section as a whole. And here I'm going to focus on very specific problems and I'll link that other video below. The first topic I'm going to tackle is probability. These are the types of questions where it asks, what are the chances that um, event A and B can occur, or event A or B? Now I'm going to go over the three equations that you need to know for probability. So if the event is mutually exclusive, meaning that if one of the events occurs, the other cannot, then the probability of event A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, if the events are not mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B occurring, like A and B in parentheses. Um, sorry, I keep looking down. I have them like written out here so I don't mess up. And then the third one is the probability of A and B occurring is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now I have an example question that involves probability. It's a very, very basic question. You can totally get the answer from the equations I just gave you. Um, it's in the official ACT prep book on page 353. It's question number 47. So like I said, one of the harder ones. Actually, I can just show you. So that's the question. So the answer has to be D because I just gave you the equation. The probability of A and B occurring is the probability of A occurring times the probability of B occurring. Another very common type of problem you'll find on the ACT is one involving money. So the next problem I'm going to go through is page 68 of the official ACT prep book, number 52. It says, Lucky found $8.25 in pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters while walking home from school. When she deposited this money in the bank, she noticed that she had twice as many nickels as pennies, one fewer dime than nickels, and one more quarter than nickels. How many quarters did Lucky find that week? Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is to get all of the money in terms of the simplest one. So in this case, pennies would be like the simplest one because pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Um, so it says she has twice as many nickels as pennies. So if pennies is just P, then nickels is going to be 2p. She had um, one fewer dime than nickels. So if nickels is 2p, dimes is going to be 2p minus 1. And then she had one more quarter than nickels. So that would be 2p plus 1. Now that you have all the money in terms of pennies, you need to multiply each by its like respective worth. So nickels are 5 cents, dimes 10 cents, penny, uh, pennies 1 cents, and quarter 25 cents. So pennies was just p, so that's going to stay as p because you're just multiplying it by one. The nickels was 2p, so that's going to turn into 10p because 2p, you'd multiply it by five. Dimes was 2p minus one, so that's going to turn into 20p minus 10. And quarters was 2p plus one, so that's going to turn into 50p plus 25. So now you have one long equation. You're going to add them all up and set that equal to 825 because she found $8.25 in pennies, nickels, nimes, etc., but you put it all in terms of pennies. So $8.25 in terms of pennies is 825 cents. So you have P plus 10P plus 20P minus 10 plus 50P plus 25 equals 825. And that might seem a little time consuming at first, but honestly, the more problems of those that you do, and they're all the same, just with different numbers, the faster you get at them. And you should be saving more time for the last 10 questions than the other questions. As I explained in my first math video, how to get a 35 on the ACT math section. Um, so you should be okay spending a little bit more time on that one question. 
Another very common problem you see are combinations, permutations, and factorials. And I know most of you don't know what those are, and I didn't until I started studying for the ACT because I think it's like out of the school curriculum now, like the high school math curriculum, unless you take like discrete math or something like that. Um, I'm actually not going to explain each one on this video because honestly, I learned it for the ACT math section and I got it then, but I don't know it as well now because I've never used it in math since I took the ACT a year and a half ago. Oh, more than a year and a half ago now. Um, but I will link down below uh, the website that I used to learn combinations, permutations, and factorials on, it's called Magoosh, I think. Um, I'll link down the exact page below. It spells it all out. It's very clear. And then um, you guys can go through it and learn it yourselves. The next type of problem I want to attack are logs and this one I'll go pretty um, in depth into a problem because I actually don't think these are that hard and anyone can tackle them as long as you know the log rules. The three main rules you should know are this, log of a times b equals log of a plus log of b, log of a divided by b equals log of a minus log of b, and log of a to the b, like to raise to the power of b, equals b times log of a. And again, I'll show you um, in writing what that looks like. This is what those log rules look like in writing. So now the problem I want to attack is page 357, number 59. And I remember having so much trouble with this problem, like going over it so many times and not being able to figure it out um, when I first like took this practice test. And now I look back on it and it's so much simpler now that I understand these log rules. So use your log rules to your advantage whenever you see a log problem. So this problem says, and this one you kind of have to be looking at it, um, if log base A of X equals S, and log base a of y equals t, then log base a of xy squared equals. Okay, I just wrote out the problem and I wrote out like my three steps um, for work because believe it or not, that's all it takes. And I'm gonna show you guys that. Okay, so this is the information they give you. Log base a of x equals s, log base a of y equals t, and then they ask you log base a of x times y squared equals. So we just learned the power rule that the log base a to the r equals r log of a. So log base a of x times y squared equals 2 log a of xy. So you're just bringing the 2 in front. And then we also just learned that the log of, that the log of a product is the log, um, you like break it up into sums. So log base xy or log base a of xy equals log base a of x plus log base a of y. And we just learned that log base a of x equals s and log base a of y equals t. So 2 log base a of xy equals 2 times s plus t. And that was number 59 out of 60 on a math question. So literally supposed to be one of the hardest ACT questions. And that's something you can't plug into your calculator either, which is probably why they thought it would be a little bit harder. But I just showed you in three steps, as long as you know the rules, um, it should be totally fine. And let me know if you have a question on any of my explanations. It's kind of like hard to explain on camera. So just leave me like um, a comment if you have a question on any one of my explanations, and I'd be happy to address it. The last topic I want to cover is vectors. If you take the ACT before pre-calc, pre-calc honors, even calculus, you might not know what vectors are. I took the um, ACT September of my junior year, so it was before I really started my pre-calc um, honors class, so I didn't really know what vectors were, and I had a question on my test about vectors, and then there were a couple that showed up on the practice test. They're not hard at all, so I'm just going to explain them to you, and um, you'll leave after watching this video knowing exactly how to tackle these vectors questions. The first thing to know with vectors is the coordinates. So all that changes with coordinates, let's say your coordinate is 3 comma 6, the vector coordinate for that is 3i plus 6j. That's all it is. So let me just show you what that looks like in writing. So you put an i for an x coordinate and a j for a y coordinate. That's it. Now when you're adding or subtracting vectors, multiplying gets very confusing and I, I don't think the ACT would, would even ask you that because it's very time consuming too. Um, but adding and subtracting vectors are super easy. So let's say you want to add the vectors 2i and 4j. 
plus 3i plus 6j. All you do is add the respective i components and j components. So the i components are 2 plus 3, which is 5i, and the j components is 6 plus 4, which is 10. So the resulting vector would be 5i plus 10j. So the problem I'm going to show you for vectors is page 356, it's number 57. This one I really can't like draw out or write because it has to do with a graph, but for those of you who don't have it in front of you, I'll do my best to explain. And it basically says one of the following is the unit vector notation of the vector AB plus CD. Which one is it? So all it's asking you to do here is add AB plus CD, like I just told you how to do, add the respective X or I and Y or j in vector notation. Now this one's a little harder because it's asking you to add um, vectors. I just gave you a coordinate like 3, 6 or 4, 2, but it's the exact same thing. Okay, JK, I'm just going to show you. Um, so this is vector a, b right here. Now I just taught you how to add coordinates, um, adding the x and y's. So with a vector, it's the same thing. Just find how high or the y component and how um, far across or the x component. So how high it is, is just count these coordinates up. It happens to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, j, and then across is 9i. Now vector c, d here, if you count how um, many unit spaces up it is, it's 5j. Now notice, because it's a vertical um, vector, there is no like horizontal component of it or no i component. So it would be 0i plus 5j. So now it's just like you're adding the coordinates. You have 6i, or sorry, um, 9i plus 6j plus 0i plus 5j. So what's that going to give you? 9i plus 11j. So long story short, if they give you coordinates to add for vectors, if they tell you 3i plus 6j plus 9i plus 10j, you can just add the i's and the j's together. If they give you vectors like that um, on a graph, then you have to figure out how tall and like how far across the vector is, um, basically how much it changes on the x and y axis, and that's the respective i and j, and same with the other vector, and then you just add them together. I know a lot of those concepts can be confusing, especially if you've never been introduced to them. To the person who requested this video, I hope this helped and same to everyone else. Like I said, if you have any questions on um, anything that I said, just drop a comment and I'll be happy to answer it. Um, I hope my explanations were helpful. Let me know. Like and subscribe for more future college and ACT content.